Lady Hoof is not only an accomplished horn player, she is also the historian on German origin lives in Tarrington. Betty, can you tell us more about the Tarrington archive and how you became involved? The Tarrington archives actually belong to the St. Michael's Lutheran congregation. They had so many historical records uh, around in uh, congregation members' homes that they decided to build a special purpose-built room, which was built in uh, 1992 to archival standards. It's a fire-safe room and all of the church uh, and school records are kept in, in that room. Over here are the finance records of St Michael's Congregation and some of these records go back to 1853. Administration records, that's the minutes of congregation meetings. Some of the early ones are in German and need to be translated for us people today. Down here is one of the most important records that I have. It's the church register. This is the first church register which contains the baptisms and burials from 1853. In uh, St Michael's archives we also have items such as German books, texts and the certificates. This one here was, is a golden wedding anniversary certificate for Johann and Maria Mebus. This certificate here is the marriage certificate for Emil Meebus and Gertrude Schulz. This, they were married in 1915. Tarrington Brass Band started in 1911, but it didn't receive its first uniform until 1949, and this was the first one. They didn't have that one very long before they decided they needed a new uniform, and uh, this was their uniform which they purchased in 1953. This was worn by the drum major. They decided to purchase a new uniform in 1953 because the band was the one selected to welcome Queen Elizabeth at the Hamilton Airport on her tour of Australia in 1954. I became involved when I was elected the historian of St Michael's Congregation in 1999 and it's my responsibility to look after the archives, to collect archival material which is relevant to Tarrington and its community. Initially, the Tarrington archives collected things that were relevant to the church and its, and its school, but I have expanded the collection to include community material because we have a unique history in our community being established by German people and there is no other archive in the area that collects the material relating to the German community of um, Tarrington and District. Prior to 1852, there were a, n a number of German families in Portland and in the Warrnambool area, but not a community of German people. In 1852, a group came across from South Australia. They were all Lutheran families and they had come over here with the intention of establishing a little Lutheran community. Initially, they wanted to uh, settle in the Portland area, but there was no agricultural land for sale in that area and they had to wait until 1853 when the first agricultural allotments were sold in the Hamilton area. So that's where they ended up settling. And they moved to Hamilton in about October 1853. Because it was their intention to establish a religious uh, group, a community, they had already called a pastor and his name was Pastor Klama Wilhelm Sherman and he came across to Portland in, 18, in May 1853 and moved up to the Hamilton area with those first settlers. There was about eight families that came up here and settled around the area where the South Hamilton Lutheran Cemetery is now. And the first thing that they built was a little church, which was also used as a school. Pastor Sherman was the pastor of that congregation and also 
the teacher in the school in the early years. It wasn't long before many other German families started to come to the Western District because those who had already settled here soon wrote back to their friends and relatives in South Australia to tell them of all the wonderful farming country that was in this area. Pastor Sherman actively encouraged uh, more Lutheran settlers to come by, and he did this by actually purchasing land and then selling it on so that his, his congregation settled close to each other. Because a number of families arrived, uh, the little church that they had built was soon too small and they had to build a new church, which they did, further east of Hamilton at a place which became known as Hokirk. The church was built at Hokirk in 1858 and very soon a small village grew around the church itself. There was first there was the church of Mads, then a hotel, and then all the little trades that go with a small village like a saddler, shoemaker, um, a vigneron, a bookseller, the post office, etc. Also, amongst those um, professions or occupations, there was a most unusual one, that of an organ builder. Johann Karl August Kruger was an organ builder in Germany. In Australia, he became a farmer, but he also continued his trade as an organ builder and built an organ for St. Michael's Church, which still exists today in a museum in Tanunda. The German community grew to such an extent that by 1863 another church had to be built which was much larger again, a substantial bluestone building. And that remained the congregation's church until 1928 when the current red brick church was dedicated. The little village of Hoker contained a population of almost 700 by the 1870s and there were many small businesses that would be associated with any normal little village in those days. The only difference was that these were all German people that lived and settled here. The German community of Hokirk was a successful community and the commencement of World War I did not really have an immediate impact. However, it wasn't long before animosity started to be shown towards the German people and it escalated to the extent that people decided that Hokirk was not a suitable name for a village in Australia and a name change was suggested and then eventually enforced on them. Uh, so our village became known as Tarrington. That wasn't the only effect that the war had on the community. It also meant that the German language was no longer passed down from their parents to their children. The, the German books that had been passed on uh, as treasures and heirlooms were also destroyed in many cases. And this has resulted in the total loss of the German community and much of the German heritage that the ancestors brought out from Germany. So I see my role as a historian and as the person responsible for the archives in Tarrington, I see my role as one that needs to preserve as much of the heritage, the remnant heritage as possible, because I feel it's important for our children and their children to know the story and to be proud of their German ancestry.